Hello, my name is Sierra and welcome to my channel, Homemade Mathematics. Today we are going to be reviewing what expressions are and how to simplify them. So if you watched my last video on how to evaluate expressions, we talked a little bit about what the difference between an expression and an equation is. Right? An expression is a math sentence that has at least two numbers and at least one operation symbol, where an equation, same thing, except it also has to have an equal sign. That's the main difference. So when we have an equation, there's that equal sign and we're able to solve for our variable. But when we have an expression, we don't know what it equals, so we cannot solve. We can only simplify. And how we simplify is by grouping things together that are alike. We call these like terms. So for example, 3x and 5x would be like terms. They both have the same variable x. We could combine them. 3 plus 5 is 8. They both have the variable x. So to co combined, they would be 8x. Where if I had 3x and 5x squared, those would not be like terms. Yes, they have the same variable of x, but they are to different degrees or have different exponents. So to, in order to be a like term, they have to have the same variable and to the same degree or exponent. All right, so we would combine all of our x's, we would combine all of our x squareds, would not combine those together. Let's take a look at some examples of this. So like I said, we're going to be looking for like terms or things that have the same variable to the same degree or exponent. So in example one here, which by the way, if you want to try these by yourself, go ahead and pause, try, and then come back for the answer. Otherwise, just keep watching. In one, we have 2x plus 3y minus 5x. So like I said, we're going to combine our like terms, which in this case, we have an x here and we have an x here. To combine, we're just going to look at the numbers and the operations, do that, keep the variable. All right, so 2 minus 5 would get us a negative 3, and their like term was x. All right, this 3y has nothing to combine with. We can't combine that with x. They're not the same. So we're going to add 3y. We don't know what x or y is like we did in the evaluate video if you want to go check that out. So we cannot go any further than this. This is our simplified answer. Number two, same thing. Find your like terms. We have 5a and we have plus a, which if there's not a number in front, right, we know there's an imaginary one there, right? That's 1a. So 5a and 1a would get us 6a. Then I'm going to move on to my constants. So usually we only start with any variables and then move on to our constants, which are just our numbers by themselves. So you can see here I have 4 and a negative 6. So 4 plus negative 6 or 4 minus 6 would get us negative 2. So you could write that as plus negative 2. Or you could just write it as 6a minus 2. Right? Those two things mean the same thing. Again, we don't know what a is, so we cannot simplify any further, and we don't know what it equals, so we can't solve for a. That's as far as we can go. All right, three. Again, combine your like terms. We have a negative 10x and a positive 4x. Negative 10 plus 4 would get us negative 6 with the like term x. And then we're going to combine our y's. Just like before, when um, a was by itself, there was an imaginary 1. Same thing here. There's an imaginary 1 in front of that y. So 3y minus a y or 3y minus 1y would get us 2y. And that's a positive 2y. Right, make sure you remember to have those operations in between. I know a lot of people will just be like, oh, there's negative 6x and there's 2y. Right, that is not the answer. That's no longer um, 
the same expression, that's now saying that those are being multiplied together. So make sure you keep those symbols in between your different like terms. So negative 6x plus 2y should be our answer. Number four, this is where I talked about the degree matters. You can see here we have a negative 2x squared. All right, you might also notice that we have 4x and a negative 8x, which does have the same variable, but not to the same degree. So we cannot combine them. Um, and just like kind of how we start with the variables, we usually start with the variables to the highest degree, which would be our negative 2x squared here, which has nothing to combine with. So we're just going to leave it negative 2x squared. Then we're going to move on to just our regular x's, right? We have 4x, negative 8x. So 4x minus 8x is a negative 4x. Notice how I got that symbol in there between. You could also have plus a negative 4x, same thing. And then lastly, we're going to move on to our constant. We have a positive 7 and a positive 3. We add those up. We get a positive plus 10. And our last one here looks big and scary. I want you to take a second to pause the video and see that it's not big and scary when you just pair things up and combine them. So go ahead and do that. And now let's see what the answer is. So we're going to, I'm just going to go in alphabetical order. It really does not matter what order you went in. I'm going to start with my A's. So I have negative 4A and I have negative 3A. If I were to combine those, a negative 4 and a negative 3 make negative 7A. If you need a review on adding integers, I do have a video for that. I'll go ahead and link that. Otherwise, we're going to move on to B. We have a positive 2B and a negative 8B. 2B minus 8B, or 2 minus 8, would get us a negative 6B. And lastly, we have our Cs. We have a negative C and a positive 7C. So we could think of it as 7C minus a C, which would get us a positive 6C. Okay, so now I have my A's. I have my B's, I have my C's, and I did not forget my symbols in front of each. Okay, and there's one last type of problem I want to show you that is pretty common to see, which is where you have parentheses in there. So we'll take this example that I saw on this Math Genius page, which we are all math geniuses here, so we are going to solve this problem. Right, and it says, all right, so this problem, again, looks big and scary, but it's really not. Um, we just have one step we have to do first, which is to distribute. Whenever we have a number outside of the parentheses like that, we know we have to distribute it or multiply it onto each term inside of the parentheses. So what I mean by that is here first I have a 2 outside of the parentheses. I have to distribute that to everything inside. So I have to distribute that to 4a as well as 5b. 2 times 4a would get me 8a. 2 times 5b would get me 10b. Moving on to the next one. This time I have a 3, but not just a 3. I have a negative 3 outside of my parentheses, and I have to distribute it onto both terms. Negative 3 times a is negative 3a. Negative 3 times negative 3b, right? A negative times a negative gets me a positive 9b. And then my last one, I have a negative 8 times 2b, which would get me negative 16 once you have distributed everything you can distribute, then just like the problem before, you're going to combine your like terms. Right? It actually looks really similar to number five. So I'm going to go through. I have 8a and negative 3a. 8a minus 3a would get me 5a. And then I'm going to go through with my b's. 
a positive 10b plus 9b would get me 19b minus 16b would get me a positive 3b. And that would be my simplified form. I can't combine a's and b's, so that's as simplified as it can get. So as you can see, just like the problems before, you end up combining your like terms. You just have to take care of that distribution first. If you'd like to see a video from me on how to distribute, comment down below. Or if there's another video you'd like to see a tutorial on, comment that down below as well. Being able to simplify an expression is really important, especially when you get to solving equations, which will be my next few videos. So if you want to make sure you don't miss those, make sure you subscribe. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and comment down below what you want to see next. Thanks and we'll see you next time.